video killed the radio star and sync up the camera what's up guys welcome back to another video my name is easton bennett if you are new here i am a filmmaker creative and i run a video production company here in north dakota the small little flat land of north dakota population 700 000. today we are going to be talking about video workflow now i'm going to be going over my workflow and how i edit videos it's not going to be step by step it's going to be a quick synopsis of the steps i take when i edit a video whether that be youtube client instagram for fun for not fun for boring for everything we're going to go over those steps i need an intro because that would have been good to just say Roll the intro, but I don't have one. Maybe I'll get one. So we're gonna hop right into this. Last week, if you did not see last week's video, we talked about the best way to organize your files in Final Cut Pro. This is kind of bouncing off of that. We're not gonna go in depth on how to do that. If you haven't seen that video already, I don't know, I'll link it up here, but I don't know which side it's on. So click the little card thing that swipes over and watch that video before you watch this one. Now, when it comes to workflow for video editing, there's millions of ways to do it. Everyone has a different style. Some things work better for other people, some things don't. So take this with a grain of salt. This is just how I do it. So if you wanna implement some of this into your workflow, then feel free. Bob's your uncle, Sally's your aunt. My walls are white. Well, let's get right into it and talk about my workflow for video. All right, so first things first, I'm the realist, Iggy Azalea. Okay, so first things first, pull up your project. However you organize it, just pull up your project files and we're gonna go from there. So the first thing I do is I create a project file, which I have a couple different ones here. If you watched last week's video, let's go into full episode example video one. Now we have this timeline here on the bottom. Now what I do for all of my videos is I go into the footage and I take all of the footage that I have, select it all and drop it in the timeline. Now you can do that with the shortcut E, but going back into this video, that's what I like to start with. I drop all my footage onto the timeline and then just skim through it. So what I'll do is I'll skim through here and say, okay, I like this part and I'll delete the rest of this and then go here, delete the rest of this. Maybe I want this part here and here, so I'll drag this over. So however you wanna organize your timeline, go ahead and do that. What I do is I go through like I just did, skim through, find all the best parts that I want, have those on the timeline, and then I create my secondary edit if I need. Usually when I go through these clips, I won't delete all of the footage like I was doing before. I will just take my favorite parts and pull them up to the top and you can do that by hitting P and that'll bring up your position arrow tool. So if you go blade here, blade here, I want this part in the middle, pull that up to the top. Awesome. Do that all the way through. And then once I have all of this footage that I want on top of the timeline, I will take one of these little jobbies, little placer spacer things, drag it way out. And then this is where I'm going to actually build my timeline. Now, Final Cut has a magnetic timeline, so you can't really put it on different levels or leave spaces in between. But the one workaround that I found works for me is by just editing on top of this big gray blank space thingy. So what I would do is I would put my music down here at the bottom. So we don't currently have any music imported, but let's import some here. Go to our example video music, click on our folder that you have the music in. I uh, like to change this to assigning the audio role to music obviously hit import. Then when you want to pull these songs on here, we don't need every single stem, but epidemic sound comes with it. So we're going to drop them in as if we did need them all. So once you get all the stems in here, this is how your timeline is going to look if you do it the same way that I do. So this is where my primary timeline is. Now I start building out the story. If it's something like a vlog or a YouTube video, I don't do this generally. I usually just put all of the clips that I've selected since they're already in order because it's a vlog, I just put them on top. But if it's a video like client interview or something like that, and I have to sift through the interviews, I'll do this and then I'll start to build the story from the beginning. So then as I do that, I'll put the clip here. Maybe this is my first clip that I like. And then I wanna cut to this one and I'll start dragging and building this timeline. So I'm gonna speed through this for you and kind of have a little makeshift timeline that we can talk about moving forward. All right, so once you're at this point and you have a full timeline, let's pretend this video is done here. The next thing that I do is any graphics that need to be done. 
So in that case, it might be lower thirds. It might be a client logo. Maybe it's an end screen. So that's what I would do next. Go in here. Let's say there is a lower third we want to do of the client's name. Uh, here's one we got. Zoom in here to the lower third. And then let's say we're going to put Philip Sebastian is a motion designer. Awesome. Place this where we want it. I like to show the title and action safe zones so I know what I'm doing and where I'm putting it. And we're going to put it here on the left side. Scroll it down. Let's put it in the bottom left. So once you have that, you're gonna go through the whole timeline, do any of the graphics that you need. Maybe it's a background overlay that has to fade in, fade out. Do any of the graphics you need. So here's our lower third. So let's say we also need this iMovie green screen here in the middle. And then we also need maybe some motion blur on this part of it. And these are all the graphics we need. The next thing that I do is I like to go in and color grade. Now the way I color grade is with adjustment layers. So the first thing I'll do is I'll drop on a base correction under my graphics because I do not want my graphics to be affected by the color grade. Then I'll drop on a look grade and then an adjustment layer. Then I'll drag these out to the whole entire length of the video. And what I like to do for these is before I cut up the adjustment layer or anything to see what it's affecting, is I like to drop my presets on there. So I have some presets in Final Cut under Easton Bennett presets as my base correction. So I'll drop that on the base correction adjustment layer, uh, look grade, drop that on the look grade layer. And then I like to put sharpen on my adjustment layer in case I need to sharpen the image just a little bit. Usually I don't really do it, but uh, anything that needs to affect the whole image like sharpening or maybe some film grain or maybe a letterbox, that's what I put on the adjustment layer on the top. Now, after you do that, the next part depends on if I'm using a LUT or not. Now, some projects I like to hand color grade myself and really get the style I'm going for by doing my own look. And then sometimes if it's a YouTube look or something that's more run and gun, I like to just throw a LUT on there and make some basic corrections. So in this case, we'll throw on a LUT. I don't like to use a LUT unless it's shot in C-Log because in my personal opinion, I think it looks kind of garbage if you use a LUT on a standard profile. But we're gonna do it for the sake of this. We'll go into look grade here, go into our adjustments and come up with a custom LUT. I like to use Parker Walbeck's LUT from Canon. And obviously that looks terrible. So we're gonna turn it down to about 20%. We'll go with that, maybe even a little bit more. Let's go 50%. So I like to throw that LUT on there first if it's a YouTube or something else. But if it's a client video, I'll do no LUT and I'll just color grade it myself the look I want. After we have the LUT on there, we're gonna go into our base correction layer and we're going to chop up into individual clips. Now I have my shortcut set to B, so we're gonna to go to this full clip here and hit B, then we'll go to the next clip B, next clip B. So then every single video clip itself has a base correction layer above it. Now, after you have that done, this is where I actually go into the color grading where I'm gonna do all my corrections. So we'll go into the base correction of the first clip. You can see the LUT is already applied. So if you turn it on and off, this is what it looks like. And the reason I put the LUT on there first is because if you do all your corrections and then put the LUT on there, the LUT is going to make things different where you're gonna have to go back and do all your adjustments again, little fine tweaking edits. I'm not actually gonna color grade these clips because this is more about my workflow of the steps I take to go through a video, not how to color grade. If you guys want me to make a video on color grading, I can gladly do that. But for now, we're just gonna pretend that I color graded it. So let's say all of these base correction clips are color graded and ready to go. The next thing that I will go on to is sound design. So sound design, I like to hit these two little bars and then it'll bring up your audio levels. This is where I'll go into the sound effects tab here and kind of watch through the video and any sound effects that I need to add, I'll add those. So maybe it is, you know, footsteps walking down the stairs. Maybe it's a car outside or, you know, an impact of someone getting punched in the face. This is where I'll add all the sound effects. Now this step takes quite a bit of time. So I'm obviously not gonna do that. And this vlog wouldn't have much sound design anyways, but if you're shooting a commercial where there's a car or something and you need to add those extra sounds, this is when I would do it right after the color grading. So let's pretend all these dialogue clips down here are the sound design and we'll be good to go for that. One thing I forgot to mention is that 
before I do the sound design, I like to drop my audio preset onto the actual dialogue. So I have a preset here just called full audio mix and I'll drop that onto me actually talking and then it just makes the adjustments that I need. I'm not an audio expert, so I can't go in and every single project change the EQ and the compressors and the limiters, but there is one preset that I use as almost like a bass preset or a LUT for audio. So I put that on all of my dialogue and I think it sounds decent. If you guys want me to do a breakdown of what that preset actually is, I'd be glad to make a video about that. So just let me know. But I do that before the sound design and then the sound design and I go on to the next step after that. So I think we're officially gonna start these vlogs again. When I'm doing dialogue, I like to mute everything, even the music and listen back to the dialogue and try to get it around the negative six decibel range. So if we listen back to this and you can see on the right side here, this little levels indicator, we can see where the audio levels sit. All right, so I think we're officially gonna start these vlogs again. I don't really know what they're gonna be about. I kinda know what they're gonna be about. We're just gonna kinda, we're gonna document what. So it's around negative three. It's peaking at negative two, negative three. And I don't think that's terrible. We're actually gonna take it down about two notches here and run with that. But usually I wanna keep that around negative six. And then when there's music underneath, I like to keep that somewhere around the negative 30 to negative 20 range. It really depends on the video. You kinda of gotta play it by ear because it depends on what song is actually playing. So just play it by ear as far as the music goes, but I like to keep it between the negative 30 to negative 20 range when people are talking. Obviously when there's no dialogue and it's just B-roll, I like to bump that up to, you know, around the negative 20, negative 12 range. And then if someone starts talking, pull that back down to the negative 30, negative 20 range. As far as sound effects go for the levels, that I just kind of play by ear. You know, I listen back to it multiple times and see if it sounds like it needs to be louder or quieter. And then I watch it on multiple different devices to see how it sounds and kind of play it by ear. I've never found a real audio level range that it needs to be for sound effects. It's kind of just, you gotta play it by ear. If someone has a different tip for levels for sound effects, I'd love to know it because I have no idea. After you do your sound effects and all your audio mixing, that's basically the last step for me. So once I'm done with that, I will take my range tool and I'll pull it back. This video is about three minutes and then I will export. So when I export, I go master file, example video one. And the way I export is with the V system. Now the V system is after every single export, you label it underscore V and then whatever version it is. So this one would be version one. And then when I export it, H264, awesome. Next, pick the folder you wanna go to. So example video exports. So once you export it into the exports folder, it's gonna go in there with the V1. And then if you ever need to make any changes to that video, you just come in you make those changes and then when you export it again you'll do the same thing the range tool go to master file and then you'll go underscore v2 so then you know that's version 2 so then when you're in your exports folder looking at the project and you're looking oh what's the newest what's the newest video that we put together for these guys what's the most recent edit you can go in and just go to the number system it's going to be the one on the bottom i see a lot of people have troubles on the internet and they label their exports final final two and then it's a final final for sure this time this one's the last one for sure and they just don't really have a naming system so if you use the v system you can never really go wrong and you always know what export is what <sighs> that was a lot of talking but i think i'm officially done so those are the steps that i take for the workflows of how i edit videos and you know kind of the process that i go through and think about when i do that starts with the throwing every clip on the timeline and then you're going to cut through those and find the best takes and the best parts of the video that you want raise those up to the next level and then once you're ready to put the story together i put it on a blank slate if you're using final cut if you're using Premiere, you can just drag it over since it's not magnetic timeline, throw the music under it, put all the clips in the right order. After you have that done, do all your graphics, all your lower thirds, whatever you might need. Then once you're done with all your graphics, you'll go into color grading, color grade your clips, however you do that. I use adjustment layers. Once you're done with that, go into the sound design. I put my preset on my dialogue. Then I go into my sound effects. Then I level everything. And then I export the video with the V system. It's not that hard. It's really not. So hopefully this helped you guys. I know it was very long winded, 
probably didn't explain things very well. Looking back on it now, it might have been all over the place, but hopefully this helped you guys into figuring out what maybe your workflow should be, maybe what your system should be, maybe what to implement into your system. While you guys are here, hit that big ass red button on the bottom. It's not that big but it does say subscribe. So subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more of these videos, or if you have an extra couple minutes, go to my channel, watch some older videos, maybe not the super old ones because they were kind of meh, but the newer ones are better, right? The newer ones are better. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you, and I will see you next week, next video, next week.